Hello, this is Tom, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to touch off and set a work ordinate on this 3 axis Doosan vertical mill with a Fanuc I series control. Let's see how that's done. All right, so the first thing we want to do is make sure that the solid jaw of this vise is in line with the x axis. So we're going to indicate it from one end to the other and see how much taper we're getting. So that looks like about 38 thousandths. So this end has got to come towards me. So let's move the indicator back to this corner. Put it back to zero. And then we're going to tighten the far side because that will be our pivot point. We don't want that point to move. And we're going to loosen this side of the vise. And we're going to take a brass hammer and we're going to tap the vise around and we're going to get it somewhere close to what we read on the other side. And maybe just a little bit beyond. All right, let's tighten it up just a little bit. And let's see how close we are. All right, we reduced it to about 8 thousandths taper, so we're going to bump it around just a little bit more. Let's see what that looks like. We're at 51. And we hit it right on the nose. So we're going to tighten the bolts on both sides of the vise really good at this time to make sure that it's not going to move on us. And then I'm just going to zero out the indicator real quick. Just make one last pass to see if we are still straight. Make sure it didn't move as we were tightening the bolts and we're good to go. All right, so the next step is to load our part into the vise. We're going to lay it in there and we're just going to close up that gap. Close to the size of the part. And once we get there, we're going to take a couple of parallels. And we're going to put one in the back of the vise up against the solid jaw. And one on the front side. And we're going to line up the part with the left side of the solid jaw. Hold it down and tighten the part really good. And at this point we are ready to touch off with our electronic etch finder. Alright, so the etch finder that we're going to use has a 400 thousandths ball and the light will come on when it touches metal. So let's see how that's used. Alright, for this part we're going to use the left side of the part to set X and the far side of the part to set Y. And the reason why is because we indicated that far edge, so we know that edge is straight. So let's bring down our edge finder and we're going to approach the left side and as soon as it touches and the light lights up and it buzzes, come straight up and don't move the X axis. Alright, so looking at the control, we're going to select the position page and the relative page. So we came up in Z, and now we need to zero out the X axis right where we're at. So click on X, and then click Origin. Now take your hand control and move the X axis 200 thousandths in the plus direction and then zero it out. So now the center line of that ball is right over the top of that edge. Alright, so let's do the same thing for the y-axis. Let's move it to the rear side of the part. Come down just far enough so that the ball is below the top surface. Approach in Y until it touches and then come straight up in Z without moving the y-axis. So at this point you want to zero out the Y axis, so we click Y origin. Then we want to move it minus 200 thousandths. Get the center line of the ball over that edge and zero it out again. And then we'll go ahead and move X axis back to the zero that we stored earlier. Now the edge finder is sitting 
at the intersection of x0 and y0. All right, so from there, we're going to move x-axis 100 thousandths into the plus direction because that's where the part is inside the material. And then also 100 thousandths in the minus direction in y. All right, so we've used the relative page to find this location in x and y. But it is the machine position that we're going to store in our work offset. So from here, we select the offset page and then you select work offset. Bring the cursor down to the x-axis of G54 and then we're gonna store that machine position in that field. So select X0 and click measure. So notice it took that machine position and stored it in XG54. And we're gonna do the exact same thing for the Y. We're gonna store that in the Y-axis. So key in Y0 and select measure and again you transfer that Y location into the G54. Now the same process would work for G55, G56 and if you page down you'll find G57, G58 and G59 and a lot of controls have additional work offsets G54.1, position 1, 2, 3, 4 all the way down to 48. So if you keep scrolling down, you'll find P48. There it is, P48. One last thing I want to cover. Right here in machine zero, any value you put in X, Y, or Z affects all work offsets. So be careful to always keep that at zero, unless you want to purposely change all work offsets by a certain number. Alright, that's it for this session. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.